Welcome back to the Coronavirus in Kansas Small Business Survival Video Series. My guest today is Thomas Howe, a very experienced realtor here in Lawrence, Kansas. Thomas, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself, Matt? I'm doing, I'm doing great, Thomas. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. Really looking forward to our interview. And Thomas is a realtor with McGrew Real Estate here in Lawrence locally. But Thomas, why don't you let the viewers know a little bit about your, your regional role in the real estate arena? So I've served in leadership at our state association level. Uh, I am just finishing a term or a, I'm actually having it cut short as a, what we call a regional vice president representing the zone, essentially of Emporia East and from Oklahoma to Nebraska with the exception of um, Kansas City area. So that's zone two VP. The reason that my term is being cut short is because I will now be uh, incoming vice president elect, which moves me into the presidency of our state association. And what our state association does is we kind of help all of the associations, all of the realtors throughout the state kind of get on the same page. And uh, we help with legislation. We help with, with governmental affairs. We help with working, uh, helping what we do work more smoothly, more effectively for our clients. So this video series is focused really on Kansas, what's going on in Kansas. Of course, that leans towards Lawrence as that's where, uh, you know, my, my business and my contacts are. Um, but on a statewide level, how would you describe maybe the climate for a realtor before the pandemic? And then how, how are, uh, what sorts of issues or adjustments are you seeing realtors make here in real time? Sure. And so I think that, um, you know, before the beginning of March, we were having an extraordinarily strong start to our season. Uh, the, the, what we refer to as the spring market had started early this year. And so there was lots of sales, good um, uh, listed to sold price relationships, a uh, little bit of a shortage, which we've been experiencing for the past several years. Uh, just it's a very strong seller's market. And bluntly put, that has continued. I think after March, uh, early March, we had a number of realtors who got a little freaked out and said, what's going to happen here? But we figured out how to adjust correctly. Um, we've got lots of different things. I think some of the examples are what the Lawrence Board of Realtors has implemented, things that they've put into place to help people because people still are buying and selling, they still need to move. And so I think that our, our board is making adjustments to make sure that the coronavirus impacts us as little as possible. We've added new ways to use uh, vid video and digital marketing uh, to the benefit of both buyers and sellers. We've, we're really doing our best to take care of our clients. I'm gonna take just a little side trip here and talk about the Lawrence Home Builders Association because the LHBA has always put on a spring parade of homes. This year they've contracted with a company called Matterport to do three-dimensional in-home tours. You'll be able to find the parade of homes virtually. Uh, that's kind of what's been going on. Uh, I think, think of the local retailer here in Lawrence and his or her business being even more so threatened by a Walmart by an Amazon, by some of these giants. Are you seeing that equivalent um, in real estate in terms of this might be a moment where you might want to be even more so protective of a Zillow automating that process online? And maybe if you can just speak to what a local realtor can even still bring to the table under this virtual climate. Well, what we've seen is in this virtual climate, uh, people need guidance and personal touch more than ever. And so uh, we've seen the big guys, we've seen Redfin laying off 41% of its, of its workforce. We've seen uh, Open Door and Compass, all of those guys really retracting because they don't have the ability to connect with the client personally. And although we're doing it at a distance, we still are on the ground. I still am walking into houses with masks, uh, mask on and gloves on with wipes and spray to make sure that, you know, that I can see what's there, that I can tell the difference by walking in the house. Sometimes my clients say, yes, I'd like to go see the house. Sometimes they say, go and take a video for us. 
Um, and as you know better than anybody, probably video marketing, yeah. video uh, reality, it's, it's not quite as good as the real thing, but we're getting a lot better at it. Absolutely. And so, so is there a scenario where the buyer never sets foot into the home before, before buying it at this point? Yes, there is. And we have some protections in place to help them do that. We have a contingency of viewing of actual per walking in the door. Uh, we have a number of coronavirus documents which have come into play. Uh, both our company as well as our multiple listing service have, have helped us create documents that protect all the clients, both buyers and sellers, so that uh, we're doing a pretty good job at keeping them distanced making sure that their interests are protected and uh, we're, they're still able to buy and sell houses. Well, I appreciate you giving some anecdotal stories about what's happening on the, on the buyer side. Are you heading into this interview? I was curious if sellers are more reluctant to put their house on the market in this climate right now. Um, I, I think yes. The answer is yes. I've had a number of sellers who have said, oh, I just want to hit the pause button for a little bit. And of course, we completely respect their feelings and what their emotions are around that. Uh, but at the same time, numbers of sellers are saying, well, we're able to deal with this. We're not particularly concerned. And so we're going to go ahead and, and uh, put our house on the market. I had an experience last week where I've been working with a seller for about two months to prepare her home for sale. Finally was ready. She said, should I wait? I said, well, you can wait if you like, and I will respect that. But let's see what happens if you put it on the market. And we put it on the market on a Monday. And by Wednesday, we had attracted four offers. She got more than her asking price. And so uh, it was a good experience. And based on the fact that realtors really care about their clients. And so the buyer's agent for that house was very uh, protective, very conscientious about how they showed the property and uh, the seller ended up with what was important to them. So, yeah. Absolutely. So in full disclosure, uh, you and I have been producing videos, market snapshot videos, taking a look at the data here in Lawrence. And so what we were just speaking about is a perfect segue to to, to do an iteration of that right now. It's no secret that Lawrence has had uh, an, uh, an issue or a shortage in, 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 uh, demand, in, in inventory. And I, so the absorption rate has, has been around, what, two and a half months, three months on, on kind of that, that end of the and, spectrum? And lower, than that. and lower than that. I think that as we did these last year, we were looking at uh, low twos, 2.1, like that. So I think it's always helpful when you can define what the absorption rate is, and maybe we can start with that metric. Good. So um, if you had a certain number of houses that had sold over the past year, and the, the illustration that I think is easy to follow is if you sold in the past year 1,200 houses, it means that you sold 100 houses per month. Averages out some months more, some months less, but you have to work when you're working with statistics, you work with averages. So if you sold 1,200 houses per month, and today you had 600 houses available on the market, it would mean that you had six months worth of inventory. Six months worth of sales would take care of all of the houses that are on the market. Less than six months worth of inventory is generally considered to favor sellers, a seller's market because it means that those with the supply are in the driver's seat. If you have more than six months, you have a buyer's market because the buyers have the demand. Now there's more supply than there is demand, so it's gonna favor those with the demand. Right now, we're in a very strong seller's market. And as we've talked about it before, the current absorption rate uh, as of about 15 minutes ago was uh, 1.96 months worth of inventory. I, when I ran the market statistic numbers this morning, I was surprised at where we are. Uh, the market has continued strong activity, strong strength. Uh, and we've done that through a number of great new tools. I'm going to take just a little side trip here and talk about the Lawrence Home Builders Association because the LHBA has always put on a spring parade of homes. This year, they've contracted with a company called Matterport to do three-dimensional in-home tours. 
So LHBA, I expect if you go to lhba.org, I think that's their web address, you'll be able to find the Parade of Homes virtually. We, you normally talk about the median home price. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, where, so, where does that stand and is that narrative changing? Are you seeing first time home buyers, um, you know, be, being spoken to with that number or what are you seeing? My anecdotal experience is that I am seeing lots of first time home buyers, lots of people who are saying, we really don't want to rent anymore. We are ready to move on. We're ready to buy our own house. But the numbers are not holding that up. So as I look at my, um, and I'm going to kind of run through the numbers that I think we've talked about in the past, which may be of use. So today uh, in our Lawrence MLS, there's 317 homes available for sale. And those homes have an average, or I'm sorry, a median list price of $320,000. So it's pretty far up there. Uh, it compares to the sold, the median sold year to date is 222,350. So that is, uh, that number has continued to rise uh, as, as long as we've been doing this. And so 222,350 is our current median sold price year to date. That's pretty high. Uh, compares to last year's 203,700. Currently, uh, uh, the days on market, which is a pretty good indicator of how fast the market's moving, it's stretching out a little bit. We're at 59 days on market so far. Uh, but last year, not too far off that. Last year, we were on the, uh, at um, uh, 56 days on market was last year's number. So not too far off that. It's still pretty good activity out there. But that median uh, price, 222350 it just keeps going up. So this week, I'm focusing the video series on real estate. I spoke with Haken Wildcat, a uh, mortgage lender with Meritrust Credit Union. He said he, he gave some honest anecdotal uh, testimony of what he's seeing. He said that uh, normally this time of year he would see four or five competing offers for the same home, whereas right now it may be one or two. It sounds like you may be seeing kind of a different situation. What are you, What is the equivalent on your end? So I, I think that um, – it's going to be in a case by case basis, right? So we had one agent in our office who put a house on the market last Wednesday, had 10 competing offers. I told you about the one that I put on where we had four competing offers. Uh, if you've got a house that's priced effectively and that has been prepared effectively, because those two things go hand in hand. If the house smells like cats, you're probably going to have a challenge. But if you've done the cleanup, if you've made sure that the house is ready, really ready for the market, you'll you'll attract uh, more than more than one or two. All right. Well, my house doesn't smell like cats, but it smells like a two year old boy, perhaps. So I'm going to get going here in a moment. How? <laughs> speaking of preparing your home correctly, pricing your home correctly, how can folks get in touch with you, Thomas? I can be easily reached at Thomas at thomashowonline.com. Uh, my, my web address is the lawrencerealestateagent.com and you can call or text me at 785-550-1169. So if you've got real estate questions, here's how. Thomas, thank you so much for your time and uh, really appreciate you taking a few minutes for us. My pleasure, Maddie. Great to see you.